I'm Cameron Van Hoy, and I want to talk about movies with you today and television. In fact, that's going to be the topic of conversation. TV, because I've been watching a new show that I am absolutely in love with. I think it is superb. I think that it is high art. I think that it is wildly entertaining. I think it's one of the best shows I've seen in years. And it is Nicholas Reffing Rendon's The Copenhagen Cowboy. Have you seen this show yet? If you have not, put it on your list of must watch because it's a fucking ride. Oh my gosh. Look, NWR, as he calls himself, he now puts that at the beginning and end of all of his shows and movies, if you haven't noticed, NWR. Even like, I remember with his last film, I mean, show, um, what was it called? Uh, Only the Good Die Young or something like this, the one with Miles Teller, which I loved. And I think this one's better. Um, but I remember he's doing the hashtag, like NWR something, like hash. So he was really, he's really embracing monikers and branding and interesting ways and using hashtags. But, anyways, that's like the marketing side of things. Let's talk about the show. Um, so the Copenhagen Cowboy, it is about a young woman who is lucky. She's like a good luck charm, okay? But there's something magical about it. There's something mysterious about her and her luck and her abilities. And as you go through the show, you come to find more and more that people covet this luck, her luck. They covet her abilities. She's able to heal. She's able to kind of sense things around her. She's able to uh, be like clairvoyant, witness things from your past. She's able to like kind of close her eyes and stand over people and see moments that they've gone through or bad things that they've done so she can pinpoint bad guys real well. She's also a badass. She can fight. <laughs> she, she can actually kick ass in certain moments. Um, so she's just this really interesting, lucky character and the way we meet her the way the show begins is it starts and you immediately are in this world with these these gypsies all right they're albanians you know some will crucify me for saying gypsies but they they really do feel like gypsies like the like any gypsy that i've seen in a film depictions of gypsies these albanian people they're gangsters and there's this woman who believes in lucky charms and believes in this girl's luck and has brought her in, I, I think against her will, almost like bought her and brings her in. And she's there for her luck so that she can get pregnant, this woman. And she keeps all these other beautiful young women as sex slaves, really, you know, in the basement of her home. And her husband, who's just this kind of token husband, he's just there, he's young strange uh, you know he's just there you know he does what he wants with these young girls because he has to look after them when she's gone he's punished for it but he's got to do his duties to the matriarch of the home to this albanian kind of strange cruel violent woman whose brother is the head of a sex slave ring of a prostitution ring a local ring of young women, a bordello, where young women are there for pleasure, for sex, for men to come illegally, come in, pick a woman, and have their way with that woman. And one of the things that we see in the first episode is, spoiler alert, forgive me if you haven't seen it yet, I'm not going to spoil anything too bad, and in all honesty, like, this movie, I mean, this show is such a ride, it's such a romp, that even understanding little pieces of the plot takes nothing away from it. It's something you have to go through. It's an experience. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I think this is why NWR is so good at what he does. Um, but yeah, in the first episode, one of the girls at the whorehouse escapes. She's picked up by a guy who was actually there at the beginning of the show to have his way with a girl. And he, she's picked up by him. She's murdered by him. So now there's a murder, there's a girl missing. 
Now, this luck charm, this lucky girl, the Copenhagen cowboy, um, she gets introduced to the bordello. She meets the girls and she immediately puts up resistance and she actually goes on the run. She leaves. She makes her way out of there. Um, and she finds herself at this Chinese food restaurant run by a woman who is indebted to another criminal, this fighter. The way he's introduced is so great. It's like this underground fighting ring. And we see him come in and just destroy his opponent without even without even blinking, <clears throat> without even worrying about it. He's just, he just takes him down. So we immediately learn this guy is a badass. And I mean, all of the characters in this film, everyone, the look of everyone in this movie is phenomenal. The casting choices are really incredible. Um, you know, he's always had a knack for just casting people that really look like gangsters, that really fit his world. It just feels so authentic to the dark culture that he's capturing but yet at the same time they're all great actors he gets these performances out of them which is spectacular um and the woman who plays the albanian woman at the beginning oh she's so good she's so yeah she's so good and they all are they all are um and so the luck charm meets this asian woman she's in debt um and she's asked to heal him because he's got a He's got some head problems. You know, he's a fighter. He's been through it. He's a tough dude. It's these debilitating pains in his head. And so while she's putting her hands on him, and healing him, she gets these flashes of his past. And she realizes that he is keeping the Chinese woman's daughter captive um, as ransom. And so that's how he keeps this woman in this establishment under his thumb. And so... The good luck charm, as she's healing him, she makes a deal. She says to him, hey, give the daughter back and you can take me instead. And if you don't, I'll bring back all your pain. She's She really, you know, she has a heart, this young girl. So she does start to work for him. And she has to pay him money in order to pay off the debt and get out of working for him. So she takes a job as a drug dealer. She starts, well, at first she goes to an old acquaintance of her who's this lawyer played by this great actor i don't remember his name but he's been in a lot of nwr's films from the get-go i think from the pusher franchise he was first introduced pusher 2 i believe he played the he was in i think pusher 2 he's a wonderful actor he's been in a lot of stuff he's really like kind of started popping up in a lot of great films over the last few years um including this latest one, which I forget the name. I haven't seen it yet. The one on the boat, the rich people, and it all goes haywire. Woody Harrelson's in it. So she goes to this lawyer who's a lawyer for criminals. That's what he does. He works with criminals. She goes to him. She says, I need a job. So he gets her a job. She starts moving drugs to pay off her debts. Meanwhile, the Chinese woman needs a new pig. Right. She takes care of bodies for the guy whose thumb she's under. She takes care of these bodies. She feeds them to the pigs. She needs a new pig. So they go to this home where they sell pigs. Now, in this home lives a young man who's quite demented. In fact, it's the young man from the beginning of the show who murdered the young prostitute who ran away. And there's something really off about this young man and his family, the mother and the father. I mean, they are just demented. They're almost like vampires. They enjoy the son's brutality. They're able to kind of like telepathically communicate. There's strange things that occur amongst them that makes you feel like there's something a little bit more going on than just, you know, the normal confines of reality that we're used to. And so the, the good luck charm, the girl, is at the home and senses something's off. She sees the spirit of the dead girl. And she says, I want to stay here. I want to stay here. I want to figure out what's going on. So she does. And she comes face to face with the young man. Fights him, kicks his ass, throws him to the pigs. I'm not going to tell you any more from there. You're going to have to watch the rest yourself. It unfolds beautifully and, and, and just in NWR fashion. But it's a really wonderful tale of crime, criminals, but told in a fantastic way. 
And that's what I want to talk about in regards to this movie is his aesthetic, the aesthetic that he has come into over the last few years. And you look at a movie like Drive. There's something hyper real about Drive, but yet it could exist within this reality. All right, then he goes and does a movie like Neon Demon. She really takes it to the next level. And he's very much so about vampires. And he starts playing in these realms that are supernatural. And he's really towed this line. And then with, with um, Only the Good Die Young, I think it's called, I, keep, I hope that's the name. Or is it Only God Forgives? I don't remember. The one with Miles tele, television show they did for Amazon. Great show. You know, he kind of goes back to just like the darker side of reality. But yet there there are little hints at this like kind of supernatural realism that occurs. Um, with this one, he's really, it feels like a fairy tale. And I heard that he made a statement that, you know, I, I heard that he made this statement about other people comparing himself to Hans Christian Andersen. He's the new Hans Christian Andersen. I don't know if other people are comparing him to Hans Christian Andersen or if he's comparing himself to Hans Christian Andersen, but I think he's on point. I think it's a correct analogy because NWR is telling fairy tales. He's telling modern fairy tales, especially in this new show. I mean, that is what these are. You look at these characters, you look at the way that they're presented. I mean, it's very, it's very, they're these big archetypes of villains and heroes in fantastical worlds, there's something about them. They're simple. The tales are simple, but the details are so deep and complex. You know, it, the villains are as memorable as the big bad wolf who might blow your house down, right? These grandiose villains that, that are just larger than life. And the way he presents it all, it is very much so like a fairy tale, like a Heinz Christian Andersen fairy tale. I mean, it really is. And the way he uses nature in the woods at many times. It also reminds me of Bergman and Kurosawa, two filmmakers who would be able to create so much drama between a few characters in the woods in a natural environment. You go, you go back and watch Kurosawa films. Many of these films, that there will be these scenes that take place just in nature and the camera is just panning and moving but the way the stories are told and it's so simple you don't need a ton of coverage you don't need too much there's not even a lot of dialogue you know you can just kind of watch a grown man grizzled with a face you can't forget a mug walking into the woods with a little girl and like letting her go back to the mother and not even saying a word. I mean, it's just powerful images, you know? Um, another man chasing a young girl through the woods, coming into like a pig farm, getting into a fight, and then the guy getting knocked into the pigs and the pigs eat him alive. You know, things like this. These, they, they, it really... The way he tells his stories, the way he creates his characters, and the color palette that he uses to do it all, it feels like a fairy tale. It feels like a criminal fairy tale. And I absolutely love that. It is an incredible tone. He he, he also is really so he he pans a lot in this with the camera. You know, he's just he'll move slowly. Sometimes he'll just hold on mediums and wides back and forth between two characters. He'll hold. He'll play something in a real wide shot. Then he'll go up to a medium as a reverse on the character. That's it. Or he'll just pan the camera and let the, the actors move and kind of like it's blocked whereas the camera moves around. So you see what's happening there. Then you move to the next. You see that character there as it moves all the way around and back in these circle pans and just letting action unfold. He, he owns a pace. He owns a pace in which dialogue is delivered. The pauses in between the dialogue. The response from the other actor. He owns this pace. He's not afraid of it. He commits to it and it works. Works brilliantly. 
the look of his film, his color palettes, what he does with light is gorgeous. He's mastered this, this look of his. Uh, so much so there's a few moments, which I feel like this is super NWR at this point, where there will just be one backlight, one simple colored backlight in a wide, and the characters are walking towards us in silhouette against this colored backlight. And that's it. There's nothing else. You don't need anything else. And it says so much. You know, then it'll pan and you'll see the room that they might be walking into and get a little bit more detail and then into that. So he's very simple and direct in the way that he's directing. And to me, that it's just it's just a master working, you know, to be so simple, but yet so specific is mastery of a craft, simplicity, true simplicity that's rich. Oh my God, it's the hardest thing in the world to achieve. I mean, most people have to just rah, 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 you know, really go wild in order to show you how good they are, but to really just, I mean, he has whittled down his technique so much so it's it's got the purity of like a Japanese poem or something, you know, it's just so precise. I'm floored by it. I'm floored by this man's work and I want everyone to see it because he's got to keep making films. I mean, he's one of the true filmmakers, auteurs working in cinema today. So if you haven't seen the show yet, go check it out. Do yourself a favor and let me know what you think. If you have, or once you watch it, I want to know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Comment below. Also like subscribe, show us the love. It's a free thing to do really helps out what we're doing here. Let us know what you think of the show. Have a great day.